All right, hi guys, it's me, Celie, and I'm back with a, another video, a deck guide. It's been a while, I'm really happy to see you guys. Uh, I had some exams and stuff coming up, so yeah, a new Gwent patch has been released, and I'm gonna share with you a deck that I really enjoy playing, feels pretty strong, feels pretty good. I have enjoyed it so far, this patch. So um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the deck and then we'll get into some games and I hope you will enjoy this deck guide and I want to thank you guys for the previous one. I made the Katavarine deck guide. It was really great feedback I got from that. So I appreciate you guys watching it and liking it because that means a lot and it really supports me. So thank you for that and I hope you will enjoy the next one too. So let's take a little bit of a look at the deck in detail then we're gonna jump into some games after that where I uh, talk more in detail about how the deck works and what the game plan is. Let's go! It's a very strong list that really has points. Uh, we're going Devotion because we have so much power and raw points that we don't need to focus on something like heat waves. Uh, we don't want to put our provisions on that, but rather really, really uh, focus on putting our own points on our side of the board. And um, yeah, rather than giving up those provisions for something like uh, control options or consistency options either, because we do have a couple of those in this list as well. Now, since it's devotion, you might be worrying about how do you draw the Koshi and the Karanthir combo that is really important in this particular deck. Uh, I have played this deck now for 18 games and um, still counting and in none of those games have I missed the Karanthir and the Koshi combo. So you don't have to worry about that happening. If it happens, you have to be pretty unlucky and if it does end up happening, you know it's not gonna happen that often anyway. Even if you put in cards like Neuromancy, you could also miss those. That's just the heart of the card game. And uh, yeah, you just focus on finding your points with this deck. So in most games, we wanna aim to win round one, then we want to bleed uh, round two. Sometimes you can even 2-0 depending on uh, what cards you find in your hand. In terms of matchup, this can struggle against Northern Realms because it doesn't have any control for those siege engines and they have a lot of removal once their engines um, stick for a couple of turns. So that might definitely be a little bit worrisome. If Nilfgaard manages to win a round one, you might also be in a little bit of trouble, but the game certainly isn't over. And then Syndicate, of course, also has those control options to remove something like your Koshis in a game. So that is why we really want to focus on winning that round one so that we're in control of what is going on, uh, the round lengths and things like that. And the reason for why we want to play into round one is because if we happen to lose that round, we at least want to shorten round three because a problem that this deck might face is that um, in a long round you will break your rows, especially against something like Nilfgaard that plays additional spies on the board. Um, not only do you have the spies taking up slots on your side of the board, but you also have your Koshi engines that will keep spawning, spawning those um, Andrigal larvas. And there's quite a lot of them even in, in a short round. So uh, if you happen to have to go to a long round three, you're usually not very happy about it uh, and hence why we want to win round one, bleed round two to really shorten round three where we play our Koshis or even 2-0 depending on how it looks like. But yeah, that's the general gameplay strategy of this deck. So keep that in mind while playing. Let's talk about some of these cards included in this list. Let's start with She Who Knows. Now, she Who Knows has a condition, which is Sabbath. It's a new keyword. She's a new card that got added with this expansion. I think it's a really, really cool card and very useful for you to get down in either round one or round two. Now, just be mindful of a couple of things. Um, if you play Rat Catcheress early, her base power grows when you play Relics. 
she might be the unit that does get the resilience instead of she who knows and if they are at the same base power it will be a 50 50 roll on which of these units will actually end up getting the resilience so just be careful of that timing of those two cards and when you play them I would also like to mention that against Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard has Yennefer's Invocation and you don't want that Invocation to hit this card because it's especially deadly for you if your opponent combines it with Joachim and plays it themselves. So be really careful of that not happening and maybe don't play it if you are scared that's a combo that the opponent might have. Okay, and let's move on to Unseen Elder. Now, I really like this card. It's a bit of a perk we get from running Devotion. On Deploy, he already plays for a lot of value, so you don't mind that much if he gets removed. Let's say if he gets locked or he gets heatwaved, that won't hit your She Who Knows or your Koshis later. In terms of that, he's a really good engine when he sticks on the board and can help you win rounds and even if he gets removed he will play on a lot of value just by his deploy ability already so he's a he's a really cool solid card in this list again i would like to mention be mindful against Nilfgaard, uh, especially imprisonment because this is a really good target for them to use the leader charge on and then they use coup on it that is something you also want to avoid. So against the wolf card, be a little bit mindful again. Then we're gonna move on to Oberon King. This card is really nice just because it procs two thrives. Uh, it can be really good in a short round three with the Koshis. It can also help you win rounds and potentially can help you roll a little bit of tech cards such as movement with the bruiser or purify it with the taskmaster. Yep, yeah, don't worry about always playing this card in round three. It can just be a solid choice to play a little bit earlier and it's fine to commit it if it does win you around. Then let's talk about kind of the main card that this list surrounds. It is Koshi. Um, this card you want to play in combination with your leader and uh, in combination with Karanthir so that you can get two of these um, bad boys out on the board. This card kind of directs the whole strategy of the deck in that you want to win round one or at least play really deep into it in order to shorten the round where you play these guys, the Koshis, by as much as you can because of their adrenaline and because of the fact that they will swarm your board as well. So you're aiming for a short round with these and as many thrives as possible. You want to keep a nice thrive curve in your hand so that you're able to thrive your Koshis as many times as possible for the maximum point value. Now, if you get bled when you have lost round one, don't be too afraid of committing your Karanthir and your Koshi and save the other Koshi plus your leader charge for round three. Uh, that's a pretty good good strategy to take when you are getting bled. But if you can direct how the game goes, then you want to bleed and maybe save your Karanthir and your Koshi for round three. Noggle 4 is here for consistency. It's a nice card to play, for example, in round two when you are bleeding yourself because it will show you two golds and one of those, the one that you don't play, will be guaranteed for you to get in your hand in round three or two if you play this in round one. And this can really help you find your Koshi. So keep that in mind. It can be nice to, to play in earlier rounds than round three. Of course, if you have found your Koshi and your Karanthia early on in the game, you can play this whenever you like. And then we'll move on to the Osril. This card is really nice to just prop your thrives and get another big tall unit on the board. Usually you want to eat your own rat catchers or the she who knows for a short round three. This is really perfect. Um, you can try to mulligan this round one, but only if you have your Koshi and your Karanthir in hand. Otherwise I would keep it just because it dilutes the Nogglefar if you put it back in the deck. Whereas in other decks, you might want to mulligan your Osheral round one. So another thing to be a little bit mindful of. Let's talk about the Rat Catcheress. So whenever this unit is damaged, reduce its base power by one. This kind of makes it so that you usually don't want to play this 
too early but sometimes you might have awkward spots where you are forced to do so then you just have to hope that uh, you can enable the sabbath as soon as possible but ideally you would like to have your sabbath enabled before you play this card but it's just a good tempo card that will proc the thrives because of its high base power let's move on to the legendary crone lady so we have wispus bruis and weavis Usually Bruis wants to come down first because the consumes aren't very valuable in this deck. Ideally, you can combine your Bruis with an Arcuspor for thinning round one. But if you don't find her, don't worry. The consumes can be valuable on something like poison. Then Wispus and Weavis can come down. Of course, their boosts and their damage uh, amounts will get higher depending on how many other crones you play before. So if you know that you need the six point damage from Wispus, try to time the crones accordingly. Then we move on to Endrica Larva, which is just a really solid proactive play in this deck. It's a two point base power unit that will uh, get a point every time you play something that has more power than the, the larva itself. So really solid cards and nice proactive plays. You always open the round with it when you find it. Then you go for the Gan Keen, uh, ideally after you have enabled a Relict Pocket. So let's say you play her in between a Bruis and a Witch Apprentice, then you will get a nice nine power Gan Keen that will move onto your graveyard for ghoul potentially to later consume. That's why we have a ghoul in this deck as well. For round three or round two, after you set up your Gankeen, of course. The An El Conqueror is a nice perk of having devotion. We get to play the 744 uh, provisions and they will be proccing a lot of thrives and just be pretty solid point plays. The Arcus Boars are usually your mulligan targets unless you have consumes in your hand. You need to have either Bruce or the Endregal Warrior. This is why we are running the Endregal Warrior in this list. You want to consume an Arcuspore. You want to get that extra thinning out, hopefully in round one or round two. But don't worry too much if you don't find any consumes. You always just mulligan these Arcuspores and they automatically become these for provision mulligan fodder cards pretty much. This Zendriga Warrior could potentially be something like a Noon Wraith if you want to change the Arcus Boris for something else as well. If you find that they are breaking a little bit too often, you can't get the consumes uh, working or you get you find two of them in your hand. Of course, be a little bit careful when you mulligan, but usually just focus on mulliganing these away unless you have a consume. And let's talk about Witch Apprentice. Just this really amazing card that got added into the game with the expansion. It's only four provisions, but boy is it a lot of points when it goes off and stays on the board. Of course, it has the condition of Sabbath, but uh, it's not very hard to achieve with this list. And you want to play them as early as possible when they will start getting their procs from Sabbath. Of course, really good engines. Not as great in a short round, but really uh, perfect for round ones, for example. Then we can look at Bruxa. Bruxa is also a little bit of a mulligan fodder card, but uh, pretty decent if you keep her. So yeah, uh, a nice four provision card for this list in particular. And we are running the tactical advantage here. It could be a lamp gin, for example. Uh, it can be a tactical advantage depending on what you prefer. Let's jump into a couple of games, shall we? And let's see how this deck works out in action. All right, I look a bit different today. I have recorded these on separate days, but that's okay. Let's jump into our first game here. I've already played these games, but I wanna do a voiceover here to kind of really make sure we go through all the cards together and um, to talk you through these matchups that are pretty common that you will see on ladder if you will play this deck. Uh, our first opponent seems to be a Nilfgaard player imprisonment with the leader is usually pretty common. Let's look at our mulligans. Uh, here we mulligan an Ar Archispor, we don't want that. And we mulligan the second one because we didn't find any of our consumes. So our opponent here is going to play the Nazca Sergeant and use the Veil Stratagem on it, which makes it a little bit awkward for our Bruxa to come down because she has bleed. Um, so that means I need to find another play here. 
what I decided to do is I'm just gonna go for the rat catchers because um, it's a proactive play even if it means we haven't enabled our Sabbath yet it's um, a little bit worse but uh, we are we don't have that many proactive plays here so we definitely go with the rat catchers we do get punished here from our opponent since uh, they play the blight maker gets really good value on that rat catchers uh, next, I'm going to play my Bruxa because I want to play my Thrive units pretty early. I'm ready to go deep into the round because I really have to win it against Nilfgaard. Uh, so you don't want to hold on to any of your smaller Thrive units. You want to get them on the board pretty fast. Okay, opponent decides to copy this Bruxa and plays it on this Rat Catcher to get really good value on it. Uh, and avoids giving us the Sabbath that way. Of course, we need to come up with a play here, and we're setting up a relict pocket by playing our Wispus uh, right now. And boost the Rat Catcheress. We don't want her to die just yet. She gets a point every time we play another relict. So now we have set up our relict pocket here, which means Gan Keen can come down for some really solid value. Opponent, on the other hand, has decided to play a uh, thin their deck, which is good for opponent. Let's see what comes down next. It seems to be a coup on this Bruxa. I maybe would have expected it to come down a little bit earlier, but here it is and it decides to copy this Bruxa for pretty decent value. All right, now we have set up our Sabbath on our row so we can play this Witch Apprentice. Now this engine I love, it feels really strong to play and um, we can definitely put some pressure on the board by going for this play. And opponent comes in hot with the Brothens, going for another copy. I was hoping that the previous coup that we saw would be the last copy card that opponent has, but they can still copy this really valuable engine from us, which is part of Nilfgaard's strategy that makes it really, really good. So now we have to play our second engine and hope that these two will compete with opponent. We really want to win round one in the Nilfgaard matchup. It is very important when you're playing this deck. Um, and we want to stay where she who knows here. We don't want it to get invocated. And the worst part is that it gets invocated and Joachimed. So we're going to avoid that. But now we see Joachim, so at least that's not going to happen round one, which is quite nice. Opponent definitely knows they want to win round one as well. Here comes our second Gan Keen. I feel we have a pretty solid round one hand here with a lot of engines and a lot of big points on the board. And so our opponent does take the pass here, which is really perfect for us to put this She Who Knows down. We know it's not gonna get removed and we quite nicely take round one here and we move on to round two. And let's talk a little bit about the strategy there. We have to push Nilfgaard. Um, because they have the ball a deck most of the time, unless they're playing the clog deck that clogs your uh, deck with some of your own bad bronzes. But this is a, a ball deck clearly, which means we have to get the ball out. Now, we do have nice carryover because of she who knows, and therefore we can immediately go for this push here with Karanthir into the Koshi for an immediate threat on the board. The adrenaline of these cards are activated. It's really, really good for us. And this definitely puts some pressure on opponent to either play the ball really early or play some other valuable stuff. Opponent knows what's going on. And so they play this ball here, which is a decent choice. And that means it's a pretty easy pass for us, as well as they use a leader charge to lock this Koshi. We still have one Koshi left and we have our leader charge. So a lot of the time, don't be scared of playing like a Karanthir pretty early. Um, and then moving on to, to, or saving this other Koshi for a later round, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Very nice pass for us here. We still have a lot of points in our deck and opponent has to make a big play here to catch up. I really wondered when I was playing this what he could make up these points with. And um, we're gonna take a look and see what we're gonna find. It's a Fergus. And I, I believe that Fergus is the only card here that does it for opponents. So uh, they're really lucky to be playing this type of a version here 
and opponent takes this round nicely, so we move on to round three. And see what we find from our deck. All right, another Arcuspore, but still no consume. That is not great. Two golds in the deck still, of course, Nogglefar will help us find one, and we do roll into this Unseen Elder here. Uh, our opponent it does a proactive Blightmaker, which Definitely isn't fine. that great because they miss out on the two point damage. Um, we did find a Larva in this round. It's always the play we want to open it with if we have it in our hand. So we're definitely gonna start uh, with the Larva and then play a little bit more until the Koshi Adrenaline is uh, activated. And um, yeah, let's see what our opponent will do here. Right, here comes a lock and a coup. The reason for why opponent is making this play is because we saw them play Joachim and Roderick before, so they probably don't think they have a great coup target. Of course we have the Elder, but not a lot of people expect that. So opponent does decide that it's worth getting this larva on the board early here and takes the coup. Now, this is looking pretty nice for our Elder. <laughs> It could potentially still get invocated, we haven't seen that yet, but it's at least no way for our opponent to play it themselves because the Joachim has already been spent. They could play it if they run something like Gorther and Cantrella, but it's definitely not a huge threat, so the Elder is quite a nice play here. And our opponent has to deal with the Elder, which means they cannot deal with our Koshi now which is really nice for us, uh, unless they have a lock in hand, of course. But we go ahead and play this Koshi. Use the later ability in combination with your Koshi uh, to make sure you get that Thrive value there. Uh, we could potentially have held this leader charge and got more pings by playing something like Oberon after that uh, without playing the leader. But uh, we want to play it safe here and just trigger all of our points. So that's the, the choice. I made. Now we're gonna go for an Oberon and we do find this An El Conqueror that uh, is going to proc a couple of Thrives. Um, of course this does mean that our Crones are not going to proc this Koshi with 6 base power. Um, however, that's kind of okay because we haven't seen any poisons yet. This is the first poison I believe our opponent is playing and we do know that we have access to Bruis with Nogglefar. Um, so if we want to play it safe then we can always save the Bruis consumes to deny any poisons and play this Oberon first and n miss out on a couple of Koshi points but um, it really depends on what you think your opponent is going to play and what you feel is more worth it. So I made that choice there. You could also go for max value and play the crones so that they trigger this Koshi one by one. Uh, I was thinking there if it was worth consuming this Koshi or if it was worth playing a taller unit to proc it and I decided it's definitely uh, worth it to deny this poison here. So I go with the Bruis and we don't have to consume too much stuff, we can save it, save it there. Here comes uh, the copper, I believe there is no other poison in opponent's deck here, so it's pretty, pretty safe now. We get a nice kill with the, uh, is it Weavis or Wispus here, the third crone, the damaged crone. She gets in there and takes care of that cup bear uh, as we saved it for last. And yeah, that's a victory right there for us. I think that demonstrates a Nilfgaard game quite nicely uh, for how you're really wanting to play it. Um, that kind of went ideally. We were able to win round one and then put pressure on our opponents in round two to force them to either play the ball early or play some other good stuff and potentially greed that ball depending on your 
hand there, you can go for a 2-0. You can also play it safe and pass uh, after you see something like ball, just like we did, because most likely you're still gonna have enough points in round three, even if you play one of your Koshis with the Karanthi. So yeah, I think that went quite nicely. It also showed the power of the Unseen Elder, <laughs> where it comes down there and uh, had to be removed so that our Koshi then gets to stay on the board. So that was quite nice. All right, let's move on to the next one. We are going to queue game number two here. Um, of course, pre-recorded as well, but I like doing it this way because I feel like I can really talk about the plays in detail as well as mulligans and things like that. So let's see what we ended up queuing. All right. Uh, we're dealing with a Koshi mirror here. I think it's a pretty good game to showcase because uh, this definitely demonstrates kind of what happens in a mirror. Let's see, we are on blue coin this time around. This deck typically likes red coins, but blue coin is also quite fine. We mulliganed the Arcuspor because we had double. We also mulliganed the Ghoul. It's something we don't really want round one. And on top of that, we didn't find our consumes again, so we had to mulligan the uh, last Arcuspor there. And now um, we are opening with Larva. Of course, a really great proactive play to open with, and we always wanna aim to do that if we find those larvae in our hand. Braxa comes next because of the Thrive Curve here. Uh, I like that our opponent is playing uh, these one power Thrive units. You don't usually see them, but maybe in Koshi, it's going to be worth it for four provisions. All right, um, now this is a bit of an interesting play. We do see that the Witch Apprentice here would fit the Thrive Curve quite perfectly, but it would also be a little bit of a shame if it turns out it would die to something like Natural Selection. So I'm definitely a little bit hesitant as to what I want to do here, but I'm very tempted just because of the Thrive Curve here and playing a 4 would be quite nice. So I still go for it. I haven't seen any Natural Selections, so I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna say we can enable our Sabbath soon and uh, at least we trigger all of these Thrives. Our opponent keeps putting their own Thrives on the board here, which is fair enough. So we definitely have to be a little bit wary of our plays and how long we can play into this round. So definitely be mindful of that when you're playing this deck. Um, it has a lot of points, but don't overestimate your power when you're playing uh, a mirror. Especially on blue coin, you don't want to end up losing on even. Alright, um, I am tempted to play this Anal Conqueror, but because of Thrives and because of enabling this Relict Pocket, I do end up going with the Wispus. Um, I'm going to boost to play around Parasite here. I don't usually see Parasite, but there is a possibility when you're playing against monsters. So we we'll boost our Witch Apprentice to play around that. And of course, we now have enabled our Relict Pocket for the Gankeen, so we can put it in between the Wispus and the uh, Witch Apprentice there. I absolutely love that premium as well. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> All right, and down comes Maxi. So this tells us immediately that we're not dealing with a devotion list. I do think non-devotion is more popular. Personally, I do prefer a devotion list. Um, the added consistency, you can still miss it even if you're playing non-devotion. So we just wanna go for solid points. No heat waves, none of that, um, but rather points. Let's see how it fares against something that probably is going to be uh, including a heat wave or something like that. So we play the Gankin here. We uh, get it enabled uh, because we play it in between two relics, which is what you want to aim for. Now opponent uh, is enabling their thrives. Of course, the interesting play there is we could go for two Anel Conquerors first to make sure we get as much value as we can out of these Thrives. But the reason for why I played the Gankeen before um, is just because I want to prepare to kind of get out of this round. We, we can't afford to trigger these 
thrives uh, too much anymore. So that's why we kind of prioritize just the point value of playing Gan Keen first. One Anel can conquer still uh, that can trigger the thrives and then we take a pass because we definitely have to be a little bit worried about the point gap. Uh, our opponent is able to play she who knows now, which is really nice for our opponent as they do get this carry over here, either on rat catchers or uh, she who knows. It's a 50-50, so let's see what it rolls. Opponent will be happy if it does hit the she who knows. And it does, so that's really nice for opponent. Opponent might want to further play into round two uh, to hopefully carry over their she who knows over uh, to round three. It's a really cool, cool card and you can do that uh, with it. So let's see if uh, our opponent manages to do that. Uh, we do take mulligans here. The Gan Keen isn't really something we want here because we cannot enable the Relict Pocket. We haven't found our Koshi yet, but we do have Noggle for it, which will show us two golds. We're hoping that one of them will be Koshi if we don't end up drawing it. Uh, and we do find She Who Knows here, which is a really nice card to find. Like I predicted, our opponent definitely will continue playing this round uh, because of that resilience unit that they are looking to carry over to round three. Uh, we're gonna open with the larva, even if it does seem a little bit slow, um, we have to be prepared to play uh, long into this round, so therefore we do go ahead and commit it. And again, Keen comes online there. Opponent has enabled their Sabbath now for the carryover on She Who Knows. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play this Unseen Elder. We target the Caretaker here because uh, of its Purify ability. So at least our Elder plays for quite some points here on Deploy. Okay, and we do see a heat wave come down. We're actually pretty happy to see it because that means our she who knows is quite likely to survive now that there isn't a heat wave anymore. So it's quite nice that our elder was able to play for pretty good points and um, we could still save the she who knows. Okay, we do go for the noggle far there. We're we are aiming to do exactly what we did there. We found Koshi, so we're guaranteed to draw it in round three, to have it in our hand, and we do play the uh, damage crone here, just because, um, yeah, it does four damage there. We damage the she who knows, so that the base power does go down on that one. Of course, opponent answers with their own boost. Uh, Weavis and Wispus. I never remember which one is which, but uh, yeah. We're just gonna call them Damage Crone and Boost Crone. Uh, we have an interesting choice here. We could go for either She Who Knows or this Oberon. Uh, I like the Oberon because it would fit the Thrive Curve. It's quite safe to do in case our opponent decides to play more and could potentially have something like a Dorigary and a lock for the She Who Knows. Of course, we do low roll uh, with this Oberon. It can something sometimes happen when you play it. So we can only trigger one Thrive and this Purify doesn't do too much, but because of this bleed that our opponent plays here or has on their side of the board, we are still able to get ahead with that play, which is quite nice. Okay, and now we are looking to take a pass because um, we have card advantage. Our opponent does get carryover, of course, from the She Who Knows because they have 25 Sabbath enabled there, but we instead have the the card advantage, so it's looking like we're going to a pretty fair round three. And we know we're guaranteed to draw into the Koshi because of the Noggle Fart, so we're really happy to see that. Okay, we're finding a lot of golds. Uh, we're gonna, probably gonna check here. Yep, I'm checking the, the deck to see if there's anything better to draw into. We did find all of our golds, but Brew is in our hand here, is not looking that great she's not really gonna do much with the consumes in this matchup i believe so i do take the mulligan and uh i'm i'm wanting to keep this hand just because it doesn't get much much better than this and this anel conqueror should definitely be enough now i'm looking at the graveyards because i want to check if there is a target that is better for Oswell than 
uh, to get a slight advantage. I'm assuming that our opponent as well does play the Osral. That's a common card that you've seen in these Koshi lists. So I just want to make sure we guarantee a little bit of an advantage by eating the tallest unit, which is the Rat Catcheress here. So we go ahead and open with it. We also have to play one card before the Adrenaline on our Koshi is enabled. So this Oswell seems like a pretty nice play. Our opponents can now play Karanthir into Koshi and we will answer with the exact same play. Mirror matches, a lot of fun. <laughs> so there we go, Karanthir does come online here and click our Koshi. It is definitely vital that you find this combination of cards in this deck list. But despite of it being devotion, you will be able to find it most of the time unless you get really unlucky. So now both me and our opponent were trying to trigger these Koshis as many times as possible. And uh, I want to play my own Koshi here. There is no reason not to use this leader. So I go ahead and click it just to make sure we get everything out of these Koshis as much value as possible. And uh, there we go. Our opponent will probably repeat the move that we made there as well. And now we're just looking to thrive these Koshis so that they will keep spawning as many Indragal larvae on the board as possible. Me and my opponent, we have the same objective. <laughs> All right, I think it's time for the Rat Catcheress here. I'm playing a little bit too fast here. I put it on the melee row. Um, be observant of that. If I would put this Rat Catcheress on the ranged row, um, it means I won't uh, brick my own rows, which I now will. Uh, we will miss out on two points because of the placement of the Rat Catcheress. So just uh, be a little bit more observant than me. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, the Anel Conqueror comes down and triggers even more of these Koshis. Quite nice Thrive Curve we have going on, of course. She who knows, uh, being the last play, we can already see she's going to trigger a lot of these Thrives. Opponent probably has uh, a unit to trigger some Thrives with here as well. Or an Aeromancy into a unit that does that. <laughs> okay, we do see Necromancy. And uh, going for the Gan key in here for a pretty powerful finishing play. But as we can see here, the point gap is quite nice for us. We can still get ahead with this She Who Knows quite smoothly. And even if we do miss two points because of the Rat Catcher's placement, we're still uh, nicely safe here. So that's uh, definitely cool for us. All right, um, there is that game and we are doing quite quite nicely with this deck uh, pretty pretty early in the season as well. All right, we are a back in deck builder it seems, but yeah, that is the end of this video. Uh, demonstrating two quite popular matchups that you might see if you do play this deck on ladder. So keep in mind a couple of these things uh, that we mentioned and I hope you have a lot of fun trying out the deck. All right, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. And if you do end up trying out this deck yourself on a ladder, let me know how that goes as well. I will see you for the next video that I make. And if you want to catch me on Twitch playing some live games, check it out. The link is in the descriptions. And uh, maybe I will see you guys on the ladder. Who knows? Until next time. Bye.